guys, my name is Sarah, this is Rue, and we live full-time in my Airstream. Living in an RV with a dog has its challenges, but I'm here to tell you that it's totally possible, and here's how we do it. We're using food motivation for this video. <laughs> Traveling with a dog is pretty awesome, especially as a solo traveler, not only for safety purposes, but to have a companion on the road. Rue and I have made so many awesome memories traveling around in the Airstream. We're always out exploring and hiking, and I even take her out to restaurants with me just to get her out and socialized and include her in almost everything I do. Thank you for all the drool. <laughs> she also doubles as a built-in security system for the Airstream, which is nice. And I even have a beware of dog sign on my front door just to alarm potential intruders that there is a dog in the trailer. My Airstream is a 22 foot caravel and it offers plenty of space for us to both live together comfortably. She even has a dog den underneath my bed. That's her dedicated sleeping space since there's no room to put a crate in here and she is a denning animal and loves being underneath things. So having that space under the bed works out perfectly. No, she doesn't have a dog bed down there. I've tried it out before and she would not go in there. She's just a weirdo and prefers a cold hard floor. But I mean, she's a husky, so it makes sense. Of course it started raining again. It stopped for like an hour. That's a bummer. Sorry guys. Winter time in Washington, you know? So the most common question I get is what do I do with Rue while I'm at work? I work 10 hour shifts and I would never leave her alone in the trailer for that long. Even though she could probably hold it for that long, she's a husky, she has a ton of energy even though she's almost eight years old. So I need someone to come by in the middle of the day and take her on a walk so she can get some exercise. Everywhere I've lived has been a little bit different some of the places I've stayed, my landlord takes care of her, which has been amazing. When I lived in an RV park for a couple weeks, I did find a neighbor that was able to walk her. But the most common thing I use when I don't have a neighbor or a landlord to walk her is Rover. If you don't know what Rover is, it's an online platform for dog sitters and they offer dog walking, drop-in visits, doggy daycare, and overnight stays. Every sitter has its own profile where you can read about them and their reviews, and I always set up a meet and greet to make sure that them and my dog are compatible. I always have the meet and greets at the Airstream so I can show them how to get in, how to lock and unlock the door, and where I keep her food and water bowl. My biggest piece of advice with this is don't go cheap. I always used to go for the cheaper sitters and I've had some bad experiences, but if you go for the more expensive sitters, unfortunately, obviously you're spending more, but normally they are much better quality and I always have better experiences with them. As far as the safety surrounding this, I have my Eufy doorbell camera at the front door and this gives me a notification anytime it detects human activity outside of my door. So I know exactly when my dog sitter is coming and leaving, and I also keep a lockbox on the front door with the keys on it so that they can get in and out. The only other thing I have for safety and security as far as keeping an eye on the dog walkers is an indoor camera that notifies me when it detects motion. So I know if they come inside and fill her water or anything like that, and I know when they leave as well. Say if something went missing and I had to refer back to it, it also records the video so I can actually go back and look at that and see if it was the dog sitter that took something. Never had that issue, but it's always a possibility. If you're in a pinch and you don't travel the same way that I do, and you don't have enough time to meet and greet with a rover sitter, you can always look for a local business that does dog boarding or doggy daycare. Hi, bug. <laughs> You're sweet. Oftentimes, I will go out for a shorter period than a 10 hour workday, and I will leave Rue alone in the trailer quite a bit. One of the things I use to keep her occupied while I'm gone is a knuckle bone or something of the sort. It's safer than rawhide. It lasts for days to weeks, depending on your dog, and it keeps her nice and occupied while I'm gone. 
Hi. <laughs> Some people will give their dogs puzzle toys. Uh, those don't interest Rue at all. She's like, okay, cool, not interested. <laughs> But it works for some people. And then as long as I walk her enough while I am home and make sure she gets exercise, she's pretty content just sleeping most of the day. I think the best part about living in the Airstream with Rue is that she has a familiar home wherever we go. So before I lived in the Airstream, I was traveling from different apartment to Airbnb, kind of just living out of wherever we could find that was available and it was very stressful for her because she was always adjusting to a new environment whereas wherever we park the airstream it doesn't matter where we are she still has her same home that she's familiar with and comfortable in when i leave her i can keep an eye on her with the indoor camera that i have that notifies me if it detects any motion the most important thing i keep an eye on when i'm gone is the temperature of the airstream and I can do that with my Waggle Pet Monitor, and it keeps track of the temperature and the humidity percentage. It will notify me if it gets too hot or too cold, depending on what I set it to, and I mount it next to the bed since that's where she spends most of her time when I'm gone. Just make sure you don't mount it on a wall that goes to the outside because then it could read a lot hotter or a lot colder I also got the monitor that has GPS tracking, which is a great added feature. If my Airstream were to ever go missing, I could track it down. And I also am able to share my account with my family so they know where my trailer is at all times as well. If my Waggle Pet monitor were to go dead, if I forget to charge the battery, I have a backup GPS tracker by Wearsafe. It is solar charged, so I don't have to worry about charging the battery. And it also comes with an app subscription that I can share with my family so they know the location of my trailer as well. As far as vet visits and keeping up with vaccinations, I always try to go to Banfield Pet Hospital. They have over a thousand locations nationwide. So that way, wherever I go, they have our records. I don't have to bring in like a big book of her her vet history with me and I'm usually able to find one nearby but if I can't find one nearby or one that doesn't have availability soon enough I will just go to a local vet and bring all of her paperwork with me I feel like this one is common sense but it's probably worth throwing out there but when I am towing the Airstream I never leave Rue in the Airstream she's always in my tow vehicle with me it's extremely unsafe to leave your dog in your trailer while you're towing it if anything were to happen and also things are moving and shifting it's like an earthquake in here so i can't even imagine how traumatizing that would be for a dog so always put them in your tow vehicle with you when you are traveling to your next destination <laughs> lastly i'm going to talk about some of my favorite products for living in an rv with a dog Number one is gonna be a no spill water bowl that I got off Amazon. This thing is awesome because if I forget to empty it before I tow, which I have, it doesn't spill anywhere. It's also great if you have a dog that's a messy drinker or likes to knock its water bowl over, it works great for that as well. Another super useful accessory for living in an RV with a dog is a tie out cable. I attach it to the front step and it allows Rue to stay nearby without me having to be outside with her on a leash or without having a fenced in area. It works out perfect because Rue loves spending lots of time outside just hanging out and this keeps her nice and close to the trailer. As far as storing her food, I found a perfect size bin that fits right next to my bed. It is airtight and it fits a 15 pound bag perfectly. I'll put links to all these in the description below just in case you were wondering. And this actually works a lot better to keep her food nice and fresh versus the bag. Another awesome tool for living in a small space in general with a dog is my Dyson vacuum. It's great for RV life because it breaks down pretty small, it has all sorts of different attachments, it works on hardwood floor and carpet. So I pretty much vacuum almost every day because not only does fur get on everything, but it gets really dirty in here really quick, especially being in Washington right now where it's raining all the time and there's leaves and mud and dirt. So I'm always using my Dyson vacuum. So as you can see, living in an RV with a dog is totally doable, at least in the way that I do it. I'm a healthcare traveler, so I stay in places for a few months at a time. So that makes it a little more stable and easier 
but there are workarounds to everything. Like I said, there's dog boarding places, doggy daycare, there's vets all around. If you guys have any additional questions that I can answer for you about living in an RV with a dog, drop a comment and I will do my best to respond as soon as possible. This video was requested by many of my viewers, so I'm happy to give you guys something that you want to see. If you want to see anything else in my Airstream, now is the time to tell me. I'm only going to be in here for a couple more weeks before I head down to California. In case you guys haven't seen my last couple videos, I am about to transition into a Ford Transit van. Very exciting stuff. So I will be selling it soon and that's why I'm not going to be in here much longer. It's extremely sad, but I'm very excited about the van transition. There's going to be a lot of videos coming on that. I'm sure there will be an updated video at some point of living in a van with a dog. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time.